TV Recapped here. Today, I'm going to explain an American science fiction TV series called Halo. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. The story begins on the planet called Madrigal, a tier 4 heavy water extraction planet. The planet is located in UEG outer colonies in the year 2552. Endless dunes can be seen and the main community is guarded by a huge circular wall. Inside one of the facilities, a group of people are playing a card game. They all notice that a man named Vincher Grath is on television. Vincher says that he's the one tasked to negotiate an end to the endless war they're experiencing. An old man, who is referred to as Professor, asks to turn off the TV, and a girl quickly does so. Professor says that Vincher's a fool who only gives people false hopes. The conversation shifts when a young man claims that he has faced Marines before, and everyone in the room laughs. A girl asks him if he has seen a Spartan before. She says that Spartans are worth 100 Marines. Professor also adds that another difference between Spartans and Marines is that Marines can be killed, while Spartans aren't humans. Spartans are faster, stronger, smarter, and are infamous for killing without mercy. Afterward, they all laugh at the young boy. Then, a man named Jin Ha enters the facility and he's looking for his daughter named Kwan. The girl says that she may be out wandering with her friends. Kwan is seen in the woods with her friends. She uproots a plant, saying that it is a drug powered by their planet's heavy hydrogen. She gives it to everyone to taste. Then, Kwan notices a light from a distance and she immediately approaches where it's coming from. She discovers that a huge ship has landed on their planet and there's also a big cavern seen on the rocks. Kwan immediately runs back to her friends, saying that they need to return to the outpost. Her friends don't believe her, as they're already under the influence of the drug plant. Soon enough, one of their friends gets shot to death and they quickly rush away. They are being followed by huge creatures and Quan's friends get killed one by one. Quan hides and sends a red flare to notify the people back in the outpost. The Watcher immediately sees it and asks a boy to inform Jin Ha about the red flare. Jin Ha commands everyone to seal the pipes and get their weapons. They get to their position to prepare for whatever enemy is approaching. Quan continues to run and she's able to get back to the outpost before the gates close. She warns her father that the creatures are neither UNSC nor Marines. Jin Ha commands Quan to hide inside the vault with the others, and she immediately follows. The main gate explodes to the surprise of everyone. Big alien-like creatures, called the Covenant, emerge from the rubbles. Everyone shoots fire at the creatures, but it doesn't seem to affect them. Quan watches in terror as the aliens start to kill people one by one and wreak havoc on the outpost. Quan sees Jin Ha's car get tumbled over by one of the creatures. Jin Ha is now pinned down by the car and Quan decides to go outside to help her father. The young man from earlier runs to the vault asking everyone to let him in, but he immediately gets stabbed by one of the aliens. The alien opens the vault door and starts shooting everyone to death. Jin Ha watches in despair. Quan runs through the battlefield and she sees Professor, who asks her how many aliens are there. Quan says that she doesn't know, but she saw that the aliens have a ship. Professor says that it's all true and he thought that it's just UNSC propaganda. Jin Ha is able to pull himself from the car and starts shooting the Covenant. A few seconds later, a ship arrives and a man in a black suit lands on the battlefield. These men are the Spartans. Jin Ha fires his gun at the Spartan, but the Spartan aims at the alien. Jin Ha realizes that the Spartans are on their side and he nods at the Spartan. The Spartan nods back. Several more Spartans land on the battlefield and start killing all the Covenants. Quan tells the professor that the Spartans are helping them and she runs away to hide. She runs into a Covenant and she hides inside an RV. The creature is still able to chase her down to the RV, but a Spartan is able to kill it just in time. Quan exits the RV and she sees the professor dead. Quan hides underneath a huge truck. Jin Ha sees Quan hiding in the truck and they smile at each other. Jin Ha sees a creature approaching Quan and he immediately shoots it to divert its attention to him. The alien picks up Jin Ha and pierces him with its sword. Jin Ha dies and Quan Quan cries helplessly. A Spartan sees the alien and jumps onto it to kill it. The Spartan reports that the area is clear and 20 elite warriors and 150 civilians have been killed, and there are no survivors. Quan calls the Spartan and the Spartan reports that there is one female juvenile survivor. Quan runs to Jin Ha to mourn his death. The four Spartans leave the outpost and walk towards the woods. They see the Covenant ship and the cavern that Quan has discovered earlier. The Spartans split into two groups to look around the ship and the cavern. The Master Chief named John explores the cave with another Spartan named Kai. He reports that the Covenants are excavating something inside the cavern. It appears that a Covenant is still alive inside the cavern and it is about to shoot them from behind. John holds a piece of metal relic and the whole cavern starts to glow. As John holds the relic, he starts to remember one childhood memory of him. Kai pulls him back. They see the Covenant running and they start to chase it. The Covenant becomes invisible and it is able to pass through walls. It bumps into Quan from the other side of the wall and proceeds to escape. Quan is left unconscious on the ground. John commands
commands the three other Spartans to take the ship back to their headquarters, while he will retrieve the metal object he held earlier. Kai says that she will go with Master Chief, but Master Chief says to follow his orders. In the planet named Reach, where the UNSC headquarters are located, a doctor named Catherine Elizabeth Halsey watches Master Chief's recordings inside the cavern. She seems curious and enticed by what she's watching. A woman named Admiral Parangoski enters the laboratory and Dr. Halsey immediately exits the recording from her screen. Admiral Parangoski scolds Dr. Halsey about the 150 civilians' deaths in Madrigal. Dr. Halsey claims that the Spartans arrived late in the outpost, but they were able to save one civilian. The Admiral says that one survivor won't make her job any easier and they are thinking of cutting down Halsey's funds. Halsey shares that John has recovered something inside the Madrigal cavern and the object is different from what she's seen before. Halsey insists on taking the relic into her lab so she can analyze it. The Admiral agrees and walks away. As she walks away, she hears equipment whirring inside a room. She looks at Halsey and walks towards the room. She sees a project that Halsey has continued working on even though she has told Halsey to stop the project. She tells Halsey to use her genius appropriately and legally, and orders her to stop the project completely. Afterward, the Admiral leaves the laboratory. Halsey enters the room and it shows a human-like robot inside a container. In the Covenant's headquarters called High Charity, the Covenant's master talks to a human named Mackie to inform her that the relic was brought back to life by a Spartan that they refer to as the Demon. Mackie demands that she needs to talk to this Spartan. Quan wakes up on a flight back to the UNSC headquarters. Quan knocks on the door hard when a woman named Miranda Keys appears on her hologram form. Miranda Miranda says that she's talking to Quan from the UNSC headquarters in the Planet Reach. Keys asks Quan's help by putting herself on camera and explaining what she really saw on the attacks on Madrigal. Keys says that doing this will set aside the politics of everything and will help everyone focus on the real war. Quan is immediately furious when she hears this. She tells Keys that her father has spent all his life trying to free himself from the UNSC, so she won't do it. Quan warns that if she goes on camera, she will tell everyone that the Spartans killed everyone on her planet and they kidnapped her to tell that it was all the aliens. Keys asks Quan what she wants, and Quan tells her that she wants independence from Madrigal. Keys tells Quan to get some rest. On the plane, John is seen staring at the relic. Back in the laboratory, Dr. Halsey and another doctor named Adun are analyzing John's body system the moment he held the relic back in the cavern. They see that John's body seemed to light up the moment he touched the relic. They are intrigued and they immediately call John to ask about his status. Dr. Halsey asks if John's neuralace metrics have any anomalies. John sighs and he says that he saw things that seemed to tell about his past. Halsey requests John to stay away from the relic in the meantime. John agrees. Halsey ends the call and she immediately orders Adun to give her updates about John every 10 minutes. And when John lands at their headquarters, she needs John to go straight to her. Adun obediently agrees. In the ship, John enters Quan's compartment to check his system for any abnormalities. When John is about to walk out, Quan asks him if she can have something to eat. Back in the UNSC headquarters, Miranda Key's father named Jacob Keys asks Miranda what happened earlier in her interaction with Quan. Miranda says that she sucked up her pride but still she got nothing. She then complains about Dr. Halsey not backing her up and just throwing roadblocks along the way. Jacob tells her that Halsey has been single-minded all this time and all she thinks about is work. It is revealed that Halsey is Miranda's mom. Jacob then tells Miranda that he was ordered to kill Quan. They will make it look like Quan has attained a lot of injuries in the Covenant attack in Madrigal, and she succumbed to her injuries a few hours later. Miranda cannot believe what she heard. Miranda snaps at her father, asking how he is okay with murdering a teenage girl. Jacob defends himself, saying that it's the only way they can save humanity. Miranda tells him that they cannot save humanity by killing one of their own and walks away. Back in the ship, Quan is eating while John is sitting with her. Quan asks John what is he like, and John jokes that he's composed of nuts, bolts, and microchips. Quan tells John that she already met him before. John asks when, and that's when Quan tells him that he was the one who killed her mother. Quan narrates that her mother is in a meeting with the outer colonies about the UNSC stripping them of all their natural resources. Then, John and three other Spartans came and killed everyone at the meeting. John says that they were just following orders as the meeting is deemed as a threat. A few moments later, John receives a communication that Quan should be terminated, as Jacob Keys has said earlier. John immediately stands up and walks away. He goes to a control system and it appears that John shuts down the entire video feed in the ship. The Admiral sees this from the head quarters and asks Halsey what's the problem with John. Halsey says that John has a neurochemical glitch when he touched the metal relic back in the Madrigal Cavern. Halsey adds that John is having memories of his parents. Jacob and the Admiral are clearly surprised. The Admiral says that John's memories should have been sealed. She orders Halsey to have the Master Chief under control. Back in the spaceship, the ship's oxygen level is dropping and Quan starts to have trouble breathing. She collapses, but John catches her. In the headquarters, Halsey is the one who commanded to drop the ship's oxygen level. She also commands to drop John's suit's oxygen level. John starts to collapse as well and the doctors in the headquarters say that he's already unconscious. But a few moments later, John is able to stand up and he opens a panel in the ship where the atmosphere controls are located. The Admiral starts to panic, saying that John might fire on them. Halsey says that John won't fire on them, but the Admiral dismisses her. 
The Admiral orders a full squadron protocol against John. Halsey tries to negotiate with the Admiral, saying that she will talk to John first, but Admiral tells her to stop questioning her orders. The soldiers prepare for the ship's touchdown. The Silver Team, which is the team led by John, also suits up. Halsey informs them to protect Master Chief the moment he lands from all that will threaten his life, even if they are their people. The Spartans agree and they prepare. Quan points a gun at John, asking him what he did to her earlier. John says that the UNSC is the one who lowered the oxygen and not him. Quan doesn't believe John and continues to point the gun at him. John tells her that she won't be able to kill him with his suit. John removes his helmet and tells Quan to shoot him in the head if she wants him dead. John tells Quan that he's helping her because the UNSC will execute her once the ship lands at their headquarters. Quan cannot believe what she heard. She asks John why a Spartan would help her, but John says that he doesn't know. Quan pushes the gun to John, but John pushes it back to her. The Admiral cannot believe that John gave a juvenile a rifle. A woman informs her that it's two minutes before the ship lands. Quan and John are able to disable the AI control of the ship, giving John the ability to manually control it. The people in the headquarters immediately know it and Jacob Keyes orders his soldiers to pulse the ship before John can fly it. The soldiers follow his order and the ship is destroyed. The metal relic bounces out of its case. The soldiers and the other Spartans gather around the ship. Quan starts to become terrified of the situation at hand. John approaches the relic and stares at it. The soldiers attach bombs onto the ship, causing the other Spartans to point their guns at the soldiers to protect John. Inside the ship, John holds the relic once more, causing it to light up. John sees more detailed memories about his past and his parents. The relic sends out a huge wave of energy into the whole area, causing the headquarters to go out of power while John and Quan's ship powers up. Dr. Halsey is clearly impressed. John asks Quan to put on her seatbelt. Halsey smiles at what she sees. John navigates the ship and flies away. This was just the first episode of the anticipated Halo TV series. What did you think? Subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like. It really helps the channel. Thank you.